Have you ever wondered how some photographers seem to be able to edit the most beautiful images you've ever seen, but for some reason when you try to edit your images, they never seem to turn out the way you wanted them to? Well, don't worry because today we're looking at three editing mistakes that most photographers are making, and more importantly, how you can fix them. Let's get started. What's up everybody, my name is Sawyer Hartman and today we are going to just get you leveled up in photo editing. Now editing pictures like any artistic endeavor is a very personal experience. Everyone has their own style and everyone has their own preference of what makes a photograph great. However, there are a few mistakes that can be made in the photo editing process that are pretty universally hated by all photographers and those are the mistakes we are going to be focusing on today. Now, no matter what level of photography you're at, chances are you are currently probably guilty of at least one of these mistakes. So we're actually gonna start with the first mistake that every beginning photographer makes, and that is over editing. Now, we've all seen those pictures on Instagram that just look like they were pushed way too far. Whether it be an image that's way too saturated, way too contrasty, or even, God forbid, way too facetuned, over editing can be a huge hurdle to any new editor. It's okay though, you're honestly not alone. I'm guilty of this as well. These are a few of the pictures from my Instagram profile almost 10 years ago. Yeah, uh, I wasn't kidding. Now, fixing over editing is actually quite easy because I've got a couple tools and tricks that I can give you that should help you out. The first over editing mistake is making your image way too contrasty, or in other words, crushing your black so far that your shadows actually start to lose detail. Now, we completely understand why you might do this. The increase in contrast can make an image feel more dramatic but it's not until a few weeks or days later that you realize it might not have looked as good as you originally thought. Now, to make sure you never make this mistake again, I'm going to introduce you to a little tool called a histogram. Now, a histogram is just a graphical representation of your image, but you, you can learn about that another day. For right now, all you have to do is open up the histogram in Lightroom and click on these two little arrows on either side of that chart. These arrows are called clipping indicators. Now, once these are turned on, your image will actually show you what parts are too bright, and they'll be highlighted in red, and even what parts of your blacks or shadows are too far crushed, they'll be highlighted in blue. This way, when you're editing your images now, you can add the contrast that you want while still making sure that your image isn't going to be pushed too far. Now, the oversaturation of colors is also an easy fix. Obviously, you want your photograph to look rich and vibrant, but it's very easy to push your colors too far. First off, use less saturation. Straight up, you do not need as much as you think you do. A simple trick for this is to take a step back and look at your final image. If any color is so rich it's distracting, pull it back. Also, if you see the whites in your image are starting to turn colors, you've also gone too far and you need to dial it back. A main reason for this accidental overuse of color is most people don't know the technical differences between the saturation and vibrance sliders in Lightroom. And believe it or not, they actually have two completely different purposes. Vibrance increases the intensity of colors, but only some of them. It tries to preserve the skin tone colors so that they don't look unnatural when they're raised. Whereas saturation increases all colors, even skin tones, which is why this isn't good for photos of people. But be cautious when you're using both of these together as they're kind of the same thing and a little color pop is awesome, but too much is distracting. Finally, when it comes to face tuning your images and trying to make your eyes pop, I understand why you're making this choice. Everyone wants to look their best in photos, but the safest rule of thumb when it comes to face tuning or eye sharpening your images is if you can tell that you did it, you use too much. So go back and make it less noticeable, and trust me, you'll thank me later. Uh, but okay, moving along. The second big mistake people are making when editing photos is that they're not creating a mood in their pictures by using their white balance tool too correctly. Now, chances are you probably use the white balance slider to try to balance your image. Your goal being to not make it too warm, not make it too cold, but to find the balance. But what a lot of people don't understand is that the best photographers in the world actually use extreme white balances to help them tell their story all the time. 
White balance can also be used creatively to dramatically alter the feeling or emotion that is given off by your image. A warm white balance can give your image a peaceful or even pleasant feeling, like a summer memory or a summer afternoon. A warm white balance can also trigger feelings of joy, nostalgia, and optimism, whereas a cooler blue white balance can give your image a feeling of loss, sadness, solitude, or even reflection. Just remember, it's always a great idea to experiment with your white balance and see the different ways that you can make your image feel. And now the third editing mistake that so many people are making is that they're limiting themselves to the image that they actually captured. Firstly, this means that they're probably not reframing their image to be more properly composed. Like, really consider how often you recrop your photos to be better than what you had originally taken. Take a second to look at these severely cropped photos by Arnold Newman. They're masterpieces. But how much of a creative punch would he have lost if he had decided to go with the entire originally captured photo? Here is what you can do to actually get creative with your own photo cropping. Next time you're in Lightroom, go to the crop function and press O. This will change the crop overlays that are available to you and give you a ton of new ideas of ways you can crop your image and make it cool. Once you find an overlay that you like, you can even hold shift and press O and get tons more variations. Just remember, people will only know the image that you show them. They will never know what your photo originally looked like, so don't be afraid to play with cropping to find and craft a better photograph than the one you originally took. And now, finally, if you're an editor who edits your entire image at once with the sliders in Lightroom, you're making a huge mistake. You can do this to get a basic edit, but when you're ready to take your editing to the next level, you're ready to start editing your photos section by section using the masking tool. You see, by manually masking out different parts of your image by hand, you gain so much more control over your edit. To do this, just go to the paintbrush tool in Lightroom and begin painting over the part of your image you want to edit. Once the area is properly masked out, then just make the changes to the sliders like you would normally. But when you're done, click on the plus sign to add a new layer. That way you can go mask out a different part of your image and make tweaks to that section alone. This style not only gives you more editing freedom, but it actually allows you to manipulate different parts of your image without affecting the rest of your photograph. Seriously, if you're wondering, this is a huge insider tip. I even used to edit with the sliders as well until I watched my friend Rob Stroke edit in this style and it completely changed my life forever. But now just a few words of encouragement. Editing has a huge learning curve. Prepare for the struggle and prepare to even fail while editing some of these photos in your journey to mastering this craft. But through these wins and failures, you will develop and realize your own personal style. And as soon as you do that, it will be a beautiful day. A beautiful day for you as an artist. But yeah, these are the big mistakes that I had experienced in my own journey in mastering editing. But if you have any mistakes that you think people are making as well, please leave them down below in the comments with your opinion and how we could fix them. We're curious, so go leave them. I want to know. And if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for a new film and photography related video every single week. But other than that, I want you guys to get out today and take at least two or three photos. Doesn't matter what they are, how good they are, what matters is that you put them in a photo editor of your choice. If you're using a desktop, I recommend Lightroom, and if you're on mobile, you can either use Lightroom or I even recommend Visco. Play around with these different editing tips and see if any of them work for you. Learning photo editing is a very, very long journey, but I will be here for you every single step of the way. And other than that, I want to thank you guys for watching, and before you go, remember, Stay motivated, stay inspired, and never stop creating. And I'll see you beautiful people in the next episode. Peace.